The name Waterloo carries particular resonance now that Britain heads for Brexit because the EU was after all seen as a Napoleonic power that Britain has now triumphed over by stepping away if not going to war. Christmas time this year brings Britain the gift of separation that a majority clearly have wanted in an election that has underlined the referendum results of three years earlier. This historic decision for Britain has consequences for India and Pratik Dattani from the group Bridge India is at the forefront of analysing what this may bring. And it's no surprise at all that the first books in this store that stare at the visitor are those that ask where Britain is going. It's all about bridges now, the one weakening with the EU, the ones built with the US on one side, with India on the other. Not forgetting that Prime Minister Modi has spoken of Indians and Britain as the living bridge between the two nations. And so a bridge would seem just the right place for a chat with Pratik Dattani. So Pratik, we do have a dramatic announcement from Preeti Patel and that will mean that Indian nationals, Indian professionals will be where EU nationals currently are in relation to Britain. Is this really going to happen? Well, this has been consistent in terms of messaging from the Conservative Party since the Brexit vote itself many years ago. And what this really means is that if you're highly skilled, you can come into Britain on a points-based system. And in that, because of the number of highly skilled Indians that already come into Britain, uh, India will be at the top of the pile. Uh, but of course, that means first the withdrawal from the EU needs to happen, and then only the much bigger amounts of migration from India can happen. Well, Britain has always wanted the money without the migrants. Is that going to change? Well, London's been a huge magnet for international investors over many, many years. For India, what this really means is uh, Britain needs to focus much more on its global Britain campaign in India, which means increased foreign office funds to promote trade and business activities in India. Right now, whether it's in India or globally, the Foreign Office just hasn't done that. It doesn't require a few percentage points of increase in funding, but a huge step change. And what happens currently? Because I understand many cities in Britain are doing their own uh, trade representations in India. That's an odd situation, isn't it? Yeah. So the Foreign Office has more than 800 staff in India. It's one of the largest embassies it has across the world. But individual towns and cities in Britain are also doing their trade promotion activities. For Manchester example? does it, Manchester does it, Wales does it, Scotland does it, London Partners has increased its presence in India significantly. And this gets a bit confusing for the Indian market because Certainly. are you coming to England? Are you coming to Britain, the United Kingdom or just London? So there could be a representation between Derby in Britain and Baroda in Gujarat and they'll set up their own communication and their own deals? Is that how it's happening now? It's moving certainly towards that way because local councils also have more funding for international trade opportunities. So Derby in the West Midlands is a great example of someone that's recruiting specifically for an international trade manager right now. But I think for an Indian market perspective, it's very confusing uh, messaging for global Britain. Could there be a free trade agreement between Britain and India that will end all this and override all this? Well, firstly, a free trade agreement with any country can only really happen once the terms of the divorce are finalized with the EU. And even then, I think just focusing on an FTA is a bit of a misnomer. Uh, the two countries can do much more together, whether that's on IP, whether that's on visas and immigration or, or trade and investment, without needing an FTA. Uh, but let's be clear here. India is not at the top of the pile for Britain as far as an FTA is concerned. The US is much further. Uh, Korea, Japan, many other countries are there and then it comes to India's and turn. And the EU, not forgetting. And of course the EU, that is the absolutely most important one.